I'm about to share with you a very special interview with Victor Baskerville, one of society's rapidly expanding undead community. We return to the site of the most painful experience of his afterlife, where 50 years ago, he came face to face with the ugly face of rabid vampire hate and shared a little about his journey to self-realization and burgeoning celebrity. I met Mr. Baskerville at the famous Highgate Cemetery, final resting place of such beloved figures as Douglas Adams, George Eliot, and not you, television icon, Jeremy Beadle. Mr. Baskerville. <laughs> So, you want me to tell you the story of my life? Well, I guess so, sir. That's what I do. I'm a collector of lives. You'll need a lot of tape to record my story. Oh, uh, we're using digital. I hope that's all right. You followed me here, didn't you? Uh, no, we've had this arrangement for about a week or so. We exchanged emails. Or did we? Uh, yeah, we did. I mean, that's... Follow me. I don't have all day. That's it, let's go, let's follow. Uh, Mr Baskerville, are you aware of how the media portrays you? No, I simply haven't read anything that's been published since 1982. Well, they claim that you are out to destroy every contemporary edifice of the British way of life, our government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will, Amanda Holden, that you scorn the monarchy and the concept of God. Is this accurate? Uh, yes. Now, today, we're visiting the famous, or perhaps in your case, infamous, Highgate Cemetery, where you got into a spot of bother with local anti-vamp campaigners, or vampainers, as they're commonly known. Are you able to tell us a little more about your traumatic experiences of being pushed out of your home? Well, it all started with one catalytic occurrence in the late 1960s. I was reclining here in this very spot, reciting to myself the Nicomachean Ethics, when some trespassers broke into the cemetery and disturbed one of the corpses that are buried here. They drove a stake through the coffin and right into its breast. It was the place exactly where I had removed the heart three winters prior. Some months later, there were reports in the media that a shadowy figure had been lurking in the cemetery. This figure was described as grotesque, eerie and pallid. It was, of course... Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, no, John Prufumo. His life deteriorated significantly subsequent to the scandal. These events combined caused quite some interest in the paranormal investigators community. This reached its climax on the night of Friday the 13th of March 1970, when over 100 mobsters broke into the cemetery and started a hunt for this vampire. Now, this was quite a disturbance to my peace, quite an inconvenience really, so I had no choice but to relocate. And then, then the real tragedy occurred. Unbeknownst to me, I had relocated to, oh, it hardly bears to think about, a Labour constituency. That must have been unbearably painful for you. Oh, it was horrible. But death goes on. Anti-vampire discrimination has plagued societies throughout history. And tragically, instances of vampaining are on the rise again today. Have you had any personal experience of this in the 21st century? Yes. I was recently cancelled on Twitter for historic posts that I had made, uh, claiming that only property owners should be entitled to the vote. I mean, you have to understand, this was 1895. This was a liberal opinion back then. People bombarded me with a cacophony of hatred online. They left garlic emojis and all of my posts. They called me such horrible things as Elvira and Anne Robinson. How horrendous. Uh, what? Oh, no, I was just looking at Anne Robinson's latest facelift. Yeah. They did what they could with what little skins you had left. But yes, what a traumatic experience you've endured. But I'm happy to say your story doesn't end there, because you did something that could inspire us all and turned a personal tragedy into a personal victory. A victory studios, as it happens. Yes, you are one of the resident artists at Victory Studios, Finchley's exciting new home of entertainment and, so far anyway, its only undead employee. So how did it come to pass that you ended up working for this thrusting new media enterprise? Well, I actually work full time as the devil's advocate, literally the lawyer to Satan. Now, I got that job when Satan lost a bet to me, but that's a story for another time, I think. During the course of that employment, I've met some pretty heinous characters, you know, psychopaths, mass murderers, 
immigration officers. But then I discovered Victory Studios and thought to myself that I had never seen such a disturbed group of individuals. I wrote to them to tell them that I was henceforth in their employment. They simply didn't have a choice. As for being their only undead employee, I note that most of Isaac Gideon Young's most recent body parts are not truly considered alive, so perhaps he counts too. That's fascinating. Quite the colourful cast of characters there. And what sort of projects are you working on with them? Well, I've been lucky enough to turn my favourite hobby into my job. Criticism. People, places, things, nouns. I will be critiquing the awful things that pass for culture nowadays, and the occasional gem that we find in the rough. I have also decided to infiltrate the Chinese spyware popular with the youth of today, known as TikTok. So go ahead and follow me there, at Victor Baskerville. Well, you heard it here, folks. You can find out more about Victor Baskerville and see his upcoming series at victorystudios.co.uk or by visiting the Victory Studios YouTube account. Mr Baskerville, thank you very much. Oh, did you see where he went? <laughs>